Hi, this is Bart from buildlog.net. This is a video to demonstrate some of the features of Gerbil ESP32. The combination of Gerbil ESP32 and the six-pack universal CNC controller is a very powerful combination. It can support a lot of machine types without needing to modify the firmware. There will always be some truly unique machines that need some custom modification to the firmware. This machine was created as a demonstration project to show how to do that without having to touch the core firmware. First, I'll talk about the machine. At the end, I will talk about the firmware details. The machine is a small router with a full featured automatic tool changer. I started with a slightly modified Inventables X-Carve. The only modifications I made were a custom spindle bracket and some taller supports to give me a little more room for the ATC. The ATC is designed to mount to the end of a crest spindle. The ATC uses compressed air to release tool holders that are held in with a very strong spring. The ATC has two air inlets. One releases the collet and the other is used to spray air through it to clear any debris that might be in there. The ATC grabs tools from a 3D printed rack. The rack can hold up to four tools. It also holds a tool setter. The tool setter measures the location of the tip of each bit. This is used to create offsets for each tool. If you zero one bit on the workpiece, you can use the offset for the other tools. Therefore, you only have to zero one bit. It can also detect if a tool holder is missing and stop the job. Mounting the tool setter to a 3D printed part is not ideal, but keep in mind that you're not doing any absolute measurements with it. It is just comparing two tools touching the same XY location on the tool setter. The tool setter also has a little air nozzle to clear chips off its surface. The air is controlled with three solenoid valves. These are three-way valves with 24 volt coils. The three-way valve can send air to a device and then vent that pressure after the coil is released. The valves create their own manifold when you bolt them side by side. There is a button that is used as a manual tool changer. It allows you to remove or install a tool. It is still processed by the firmware, so it makes sure the machine is in a safe mode to allow a manual change. Here is the six-pack universal CNC controller. I am using four standard CNC I.O. modules. The first one is an opto-isolated input module. This is for the four limit switches. There are two Y's limit switches, so the machine can auto-square on Y startup. The second module is a relay. This is for turning on and off the spindle. The third is a simple input module. This is for the tool setter and the manual tool change return button. The fourth module is a quad MOSFET module. This is used to fire the 24 volt coils on the valves. There's one unused module socket. Inside the enclosure is the ESP32 and the stepper driver modules. I'm going to run a very simple job. It will do most of the work with a 1 8 inch diameter bit and then grab a 1 16 diameter bit to finish the edges and clean out the areas where the bigger bit couldn't fit. At this point, the machine has already been homed and tool number one has been zeroed. It's going to go over and pick up tool number one now. It's going to bring it over to the tool setter and determine the length of the tool. This will be used to create an offset for future tools. Now it'll turn spindle on and wait for it to spin up. going to cut as much as it can with this wider diameter bit. Once it's done carving this, it will rise up, turn off the spindle, wait for the spin down delay to complete, and then it's going to return tool number one. Then go up and pick tool number two. Tool number two is going to use a bit of a rounded path to get to the 
tool setter to speed things up so it doesn't have to come to any full stops. Now this tool is shorter. If there was no tool, the tool setter would recognize that nothing touched the thing and stopped the job. Spin up and complete the job. This tool is going to do a finishing pass around the edges and then clean up any little areas where the bigger tool could not reach. Now it's going to turn off the spindle and return to another one. And then it will be ready for its next job. Here are some brief details on how I modified the firmware. Whenever a significant event occurs within Gerbil ESP32, it calls a certain set of functions. These functions are weakly defined functions. That means if you create your own version, the compiler will use your version rather than the weak version. So here's one for user tool change. This is called whenever the G code uh, that's streaming through has an M6. Uh, right now it's just returning true saying it was successful because there is no tool changer and it just runs past it. There are some other ones, um, probe notification. Uh, here's uh, a chance to initialize some special features of a machine. So what I did is I created one file, and that's atc.cpp, and I put all my functions in here. Here are the um, my versions of the weakly defined functions. So I have machine init. Basically, that's going to set up some variables about where the tool setter is and where the tools are located. Then there's user tool change. This will happen when it sees the M6 command. And it looks rather complicated, but that's because the uh, tool has to travel um, uh, a bit of a complex path. This is basically just G code here uh, and a function to format it. Uh, so you can um, insert uh, variables into the G code. Uh, then we have user probe notification. This is just a notification of when it hits the tool setter. It uses the standard probing within Gerbil uh, to do that. And then user defined macro. This basically covers what happens when that button is clicked for the manual tool change. Then I can just put a bunch of local helper functions uh, to make my code a little uh, more compact. But that's basically it. Uh, thanks for watching uh, and uh, click the like button and please subscribe. Thanks.